Okay, so let's talk about credit repair during a crisis. So in this video, that's what we're going to discuss. Credit repair during a crisis. Stay tuned. What's up, everybody? Ali Tirafter back with a brand new video. So today I'm going to talk about credit repair during a crisis. Some of the stages you need to consider in order to avoid pit pitfalls and mistakes that potentially a lot of people will make and how you can make sure that the credit repair process you're endeavoring into during this crisis economically will benefit you and that you're not going to be making severe amount of mistakes along the way. And with that said, before we begin, if you're new to the channel and you've been watching me for a while and you haven't subscribed yet, well, this is the time. Consider subscribing and turning that bell icon on. So every time new videos like these are up, you'll be first to be notified. So let's get started with today's topic, credit repair during a financial crisis or in general, a pandemic. So how do we go about fixing our credit given all these type of circumstances that we've gone through and because of the fact that we're kind of stuck in the middle with a lot of different steps that we need to take, especially given the fact that everything's been slowing down. So the first thing we need to consider, right, is what can we do potentially with our existing portfolio of creditors, the people that we're doing business with, and how can we enhance the profiles that we have with them prior to sending out into our journey of fixing the negatives. So that's the first step. Make sure that you look into your credit reports, make sure that you analyze the items that are there and look at the potential opportunities that you can extract from that. The best way to do that is if you're looking at your report, you know, we look at the credit profile. We know how it's comprised of, you know, how it's broken down. If you don't know how the credit reports are broken down, I have a video that you can watch that actually, that, you know, breaks down the credit score and how you can calculate that. It's actually right here or here, wherever it is, it's in a bubble. Just click on that video, go back to it, watch it come back. Uh, you know, as part of the discussion. So we need to understand, okay, we have several factors that comprise of a credit report. So in order to enhance that, we have to improve those factors. We have to amplify it to get the best results we need. So the way to work with that is looking at your existing credit profile. What are some of the tweaks you can make? For example, a lot of people have a lot of debt that they're carrying all at once, and that can potentially be quite a bit. And due to those circumstances, what we want to understand and, and and be able to do is to to kind of reduce that debt amount sometimes in a financial crisis that's kind of harder to accomplish because you're strapped financially in terms of resources so instead what you can rely on is to ensure that you're going about doing this in a very systematic way and the way to do that is very simple what you got to do is you look at okay well if i can't pay down the balances what is the most better alternative or the next best alternative due to the strap in financial resources. And that's really leveraging. So if you have a lot of debt that you're carrying in it as a balance in your credit cards, then in order to balance that out, you can improve your utilization, right? So you can improve the amount of limit you get. And the best way to do that is reach out to your creditors and communicate with them in reference to the situation that you're at and how you can greatly appreciate a bump in the limit and how you've been always paying on time. Mind you, there are factors to consider before you reach out to your creditors. You want to make sure that you actually are being on time. See, a lot of people reach out to their creditors openly thinking that I'll just go out there and ask for a bump and basically I'll get it. And the reason why it doesn't always work is because there's so many different factors and variables that we have to put into play. One of the biggest ones is the fact that have you been on time with your creditor for the past 12 months? If, if there's any deficiencies there, the chances of them you know, bumping up your limit is very little. Sometimes during a crisis, there's incentives. You know, they may consider that and they may give you one. But in other cases, in most general and, and regular cases, it's very difficult to accomplish that bump if you haven't financially performed up to par to what the creditors want you to perform at. From that perspective, once you get the bump, your limit increases over time in a couple of weeks, you're gonna start seeing some improvements in your credit score. The next other thing you wanna do is pay more than the minimum payment. The new FICO 10 and the new FICO 10 T model looks at the overall 24 month history, but not just the 24 month history, also the performance during individual months as well, during that 24 month time frame. which means that if you're paying more than your minimum payment at any given point, that actually factors in as a higher scoring model because it'll amplify the way the scoring is, is, is measured. And the reason I say that is because a lot of people will pay the minimum payment and they'll try to stick to that minimum payment philosophy and continue doing their credit repair that way. But if you continue doing it that way, what happens is 
there's a chance that you know you're not going to get the best results so if you pay more than your minimum payment and you try to upscale that a little bit at a time what's going to happen is you're going to get a lot more outcomes this way because you're, you're making the effort to go up and beyond and that's going to be actually put into the algorithm and that's going to be showing very evidently to the creditors when they're using the new fico 10t or the fico 10 Pro. so that's another thing you want to consider so th those are the first steps right during a crisis right and then of course financial management there's a very critical component see credit a lot of people believe it's just the metric of working with your credit reports or moving negatives and, and trying to get those bumps and limits and, and trying to get some funding and the reality is all that is great and done but the problem there is everything that you're talking about relies around financial performance if you don't have the capital if you don't have sustainability there no matter, no matter how much you borrow no matter how much debt you take on there's going to be a difficulty there's going to be challenges that's going to be concerning for a lot of individuals especially banks if, especially if you can't perform and you can't pay on time then you have bad debt that's going to go out in the marketplace and it's just going to crash the system and it's just the more people do this the, the tighter the banks become and the more complicated it becomes for those legitimately trying to obtain some funding and circumstances have it sometimes that you will have some mispayments, that you will have some difficulties and financial challenges. So a part of the credit repair journey, as I always encourage individuals, is to communicate with your creditors prior to the negative hitting your credit reports. See, it's credit repair is not about being a reactive individual, reacting to the damage that's done, but it's also being proactive in terms of ensuring that damage is not done. So the more proactive you are, the better it is. So that's just math that you have to consider in your headspace when it comes to fixing your credit during the crisis. So those are the steps I want you to really think about prior to touching your negative items. So work with your existing creditors once again. Analyze your report, make sure that the information there, you know, there's there's ways that you can look at it and improve it and, and, and look at some of the tweaks that you can make given your financial circumstances, given your capabilities. Don't try to overextend those capabilities because then you're just going to put yourself in more and more trouble. So that's the first steps, right? Enhance your existing stuff. And then the next step is really moving on towards the negative stuff. So the negative items, right? The way in a crisis that's going to work. And for example, in the pandemic that we're going through and we're suffering through, you know, there's a possibility that you get delays, right? There's a possibility that the answers that you're looking for are not given on time. And the reason why it's because, you know, everybody's being short staffed. There's a lot of people that's not going to work and infrastructure and systems are not embedded in people's homes, especially employees, because there's a lot of security issues there. So we have to consider these type of things and we have to understand and that we have to approach credit repair negatively with the negative items in that mindset, right? Once we get that, once we get that, that philosophy, once we understand that specific specification, then we can start looking at negatives and saying, okay, well, we have to be realistic with our time frames. We have to understand that that's the foundation we have to work with. And based on that foundation, what tools and resources do we have access to that'll help us get the best outcome? And the way to get the best outcome, especially in, in these type of circumstances, is to make sure that, like I said, you enhance your first with your existing creditors to make sure those enhancements are, are, are being done properly. Then the next best thing to do is really, you know, when it comes to the negative items, you know, using the tools, which are basically what are some of the ways that you can analyze a report that demonstrates that that item is not being reported accurately. You have to learn how to break that down. You have to look at the dates. You have to look at payment statuses. You have to look at, you know, account information altogether. You have to look at is the balance wrong? You have to look at what are the minimum payments? Are they being accounted for on time? You also have to look at the 24 month payment grid, which is a very critical component of ensuring the accuracy of your profile. So you have to learn to analyze those type of things. Now, you're probably wondering, that can be a lot to learn, you know, for one person uh, in a given time, but it's it's not that complicated. And the fact of the matter is, in my course, the Ultimate Personal Credit Mastery 2.0, I, I spent a good half an hour breaking that down in more specifics and giving you more additional resources and tools in order to kind of leverage that. So if you want to learn more about that, the course is in the description of this video. So go ahead and check it out. Click the link. And if you're interested, sign up and you're basically doing yourself a favor. But from that perspective, learn how to analyze understand what are some of the things that you can work with the tools and document those things. Don't just write a generic template or a letter or to generate anything because at the end of the day, you have to understand what you're looking for. You can't just blindly send out letters and estimate like, uh, you know, predict that you're going to get those negative items removed. You have to take the effort to make sure that whatever you're doing has some sort of weight to it, right? So in order to get more weight to your, to your efforts, you will have to ensure that you know what you're talking about. So that's why when you're analyzing those reports and you're looking at some of the misreported information, misleading stuff, inaccuracies, uh, you know, information changes and all these type of things, that's a documented evidence. You have to take your time to write it down. You have to take your time to copy and paste the specifics of that information onto your document that you can send out later. Once you have those things documented and you're organized, 
then you send out your letters and then you hope for the best and you get the results that you're attaining. So with that perspective, that's how you fix your credit during a crisis. So I hope this video helped you guys. I hope you understood the two steps that you need to do. First, once again, you have to analyze and ensure that everything that you're analyzing is being done properly. Make sure that you're working with your existing creditors. The enhancements start at the, at the home level. And then from that perspective, the negatives can be analyzed at a later point when you know how, what the specifics are you know, in order to look into those negative items, the type of negative stuff that you can calculate and how to remove that. So with that said, this is your guide and mentor. Once again, before I let you guys go, if you once again haven't subscribed, consider subscribing, turning that bell icon on. So when new videos like these are released, you are in fact notified first. And on that note, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Give me a comment below on some of the things that you learned today. What's the first steps that you're going to take to fix your credit? And if so, if you already started, where are you at? And let me know on that so we can start a discussion below. Let's have a conversation. So once again, this is your guide and mentor, Ali Tarafter. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye for now.